Hi guys and welcome back to Irony Completed. I don't know if there is a much bigger improvement in my quality but if there is that's because I got a DSLR camera for Christmas, got a Panasonic Lumix, so far I'm really loving it. I'm also kind of blinded at the moment because I got a light attachment for the top so that I could film... There's a bin behind me, I'm gonna move that. Yeah, I also got a light attachment so I could film at night time, so I'm slightly blinded at the moment. I still need to figure that light out, to be honest, because it's like on the lower setting, but I'm still like having like cloudy vision, it's that bright, but on the monitor it looks pretty good, it looks pretty bright. Do I look flawless? Probably not, I probably look really, really flawed, and you're all gonna see how disgusting my skin is in real life. Hooray! wanted to film for you guys a book club video for the month of December so I thought that I would you know just chat to you guys about books like I usually do and I actually have a haul for you guys for this month's book club as well which I haven't done in a while because I just haven't been buying books but I have been buying books lately for my term two reading lists and stuff so I thought I'd share with you guys some books that I bought myself and also some books that I got for Christmas I actually didn't get that many books for Christmas which is really sad but there you go. So I thought I would just share with you guys the books that I read this month, the books that I bought slash got given this month, and the books that I'm planning on reading in January. And I need to drink this tea before it gets cold. So the first book that I read this month was The Fifth Wave by uh, Rick Yancey. I said to you guys in my last month's book club video that I wanted to read this in December and I absolutely adored it. I'm really glad that I got to read it before the film came out and I'm definitely going to pick up the sequels. I think there's The Infinite Sea and maybe another one, I'm not 100% sure. If you don't know what this book is about, you're probably living under a rock like I was until recently. This book is about an alien invasion of Earth and basically the main character... Well, there's three main characters slash perspectives in this book. Uh, the two main ones are of a girl called Cassie and a boy called Ben and they went to the same school but they don't really know each other. Well, Cassie knows Ben but Ben doesn't know Cassie and it's just their experiences going through the alien invasion. Um, aliens have kind of like implanted themselves into human form so that uh, you can't tell who is human and who is an alien so it makes it really hard to trust anyone. Um, and there is also the third perspective of Cassie's love interest because of course no one has better things to do in post-apocalyptic situations than fall in love with cute boys with soft hands and a breath that smells like chocolate but to be fair I think I would fall in love with Evan in this book as well because he's really great that is my main critique of this book why is there a love interest? I think that that's my problem with almost all dystopian fiction novels is the fact that there is love interests where there need not be love interests, but there you go. Other than that, I absolutely adored this. This book has multiple perspectives. Like I said, mostly it is from Ben and Cassie's perspective. I just think it's absolutely amazing. It was really gripping. It was really, really interesting. And I think that the whole alien plot was really cool. And although I thought the twist was like somewhat predictable, um, or not predictable but you're led to like not believe the twist uh, it was still cool that it kind of made you question what you believed and also because the two characters have kind of like differing opinions for a lot of the book you kind of uh, question which character is 100% right and all this kind of thing it's very very interesting it was a really really great read and if you're into young adult fiction I definitely suggest checking it out especially because there is a movie coming out soon and I have seen the teaser trailer for it and it looks very good I hope that it's close to the book because I really really enjoyed the book so yeah 100% recommend especially if you are obsessed with post-apocalyptic dystopian young adult fiction like I am. The other two books that I read this month were actually comic books. So I read Daughter of Her Father's Eye, which is by Mary M. Talbot, and it was illustrated by Brian Talbot, who is um, a comic book artist. He did Sandman and Judge Dredd and a few DC comics, and he's been around for a while. He's done a lot of stuff. Uh, they are obviously husband and wife. And uh, Daughter of Her Father's Eye is basically contrasting Mary Talbot's childhood. Her father was a prominent Joycean scholar with the childhood of James Joyce's daughter. Um, what's her name? Lucia was James Joyce's daughter and Mary was um, a Joycean scholar's daughter. And so she kind of finds her dad's ID after he dies and she is thinking about her childhood and it contrasts the two and also her present life. And it's very interesting. It's kind of um, a really interesting reflection on fatherhood and on 
uh, troubled childhood and teenage rebellion and all that kind of good stuff and the artwork is really nice as you can see it's kind of very simplistic but really really beautiful style comic book artwork 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 <laughs> And overall I really enjoyed this. I thought that it was um, a really quick read. I read it in one night, but that's what I like about graphic novels oftentimes is that you can just kind of read through them fairly quickly. And I did really, really enjoy this. I thought that it was a really great graphic novel and if you're interested in kind of more personal and less fantasy graphic novels and comic books then this is a really good one. And the second graphic novel that I read this month was called Through the Woods and this is by Emily Carroll. This is five, I think, short stories. Five mysterious and chilling stories is what it says on the blurb. But basically they are all horror stories, but they are obviously in comic book form. And uh, this is actually a colour graphic novel, which I really enjoyed. You don't see very many colour graphic novels. I know that the Scott Pilgrim ones were redid in colour, but oftentimes, unless it is in a comic book, thin paper form, uh, things are usually black and white. So I really enjoyed the fact that it was colour. The artwork again was really, really interesting. It was sometimes a little bit macabre and gory and graphic, for instance. I just flicked through it and I saw this panel and I thought to myself, like, holy shit, how am I going to get through this because I'm not the biggest horror fan. <laughs> Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. They weren't like really scary stories. Um, none of them really had like a definitive ending. They all kind of had like ambiguous endings, which I really enjoyed because it made it feel like it was bigger than just this comic book. Well, there's an introduction and then there are five stories and the five stories are called Our Neighbor's House, Lady's Hands Are Cold, which was my favorite, His Face All Red, My Friend Jana, and the nesting place so they're all about very different things some of them are about murder some of them are about psychics and kind of like spirits overtaking your body some of them are about weird gory creatures overtaking people's bodies like i said they're all kind of ambiguous and you don't really know the full story and they're all kind of just a little bit strange and creepy and a lot of them are set in like victorian times and one of them set in the 1920s so there's a really nice mix of stories in here and if you like graphic novels then i think you'll really enjoy this and if you like horror stories, horror books and horror movies, kind of like, especially if you like reading horror books, I think you'd like this because it's really nice to have the visuals there, but there's still enough um, description and stuff that you can kind of like conjure up in your own imagination as well as having the pictures. That's all I read this month. Um, in terms of my book haul for the month of December, I will start with the presents that I was given. I was gifted some books for Christmas, uh, including Through the Woods and Daughter of Her Father's Eye. My dad got me both of these. I think he probably got them from a comic book shop in Liverpool while he was over visiting England from Finland. And he also got me a third comic book, which um, I'm going to read sometime soon, called Marbles, Mania, Depression, Michelangelo and Me and this is by Ellen Forney and it's about a woman who was diagnosed with uh, bipolar disorder but she wasn't diagnosed with it until she was nearly 30 so it's about her struggle um, and it is a biographical one as well I think this is about Ellen Forney's life um, and basically it's about her struggle between needing to be medicated and needing to um, control her disorder and dealing with her disorder and also her desire for creative freedom and um, not wanting to use drugs because like uh, antidepressive drugs because it might you know dampen her creativity and it's a very um, it looks like it's gonna be a very interesting book and I like the art style it's quite simplistic which I quite like heads up this is on my TBR list I will talk about it in a second as well and I was given one more book for Christmas from my family friend Liz and her children Jess and Robert and they got me this book by Simon Mayo and Mark Commode and it's called Movie Doctors because I love films! I love films! Uh, if you don't know, Simon Mayo and Mark Commode have a movie uh, film review show on the radio, I can't remember what radio station, uh, Mark Mode is a film critic, that is his profession, I've met him twice and he's really really lovely even though he has like an asshole persona, I think he's quite nice, maybe I'm wrong, I don't really know. Uh, the cool thing about this book as well is that it's signed by them, so that's very very exciting. 
Uh, it just talks about like a bunch of different <laughs> things, um, uh, different films, um, basically like what's good, what's bad, what kind of ruins a film, what their favourite films are and it's just all about movies and recommending movies to people for different scenarios and I'm very very excited to flick through this. This isn't really like the kind of book that you would like sit down and read, it's the kind of book that you just like flick through when you're interested. So and then I bought a bunch of books for my film course next term and my English course next term. My film module next term is adaptations which is about books that got made into movies so I actually have a lot of reading because I have um, two modules that involve reading instead of the one that I would usually have because I usually do one film and one English module anyway that's all boring uh, I got Rebecca this is a lovely copy of Rebecca from uh, post World War two I think the the little like person who's written in it wrote 1948 so I think that this is like post World War Two. it's the cheap edition um, from post World War Two. Uh, obviously the dust jacket is in a little bit of um, disrepair but apparently the good versions of this like the like good condition versions of this sell for like um, 20 quid and I got this for a pound and I think it's really really lovely it's got that really old book smell which is my favourite and yeah um, all of these books that I'm about to talk about including this one were bought from my favourite bookshop in Sleaford which is the second hand bookshop in Sleaford the man who runs that shop is like one of my favourite people ever so yeah that's from there I also bought this copy of King Solomon's Mines which yeah this is on my reading list don't really know much about it about mines about Africa I really don't know I've not seen any of the, the adapt adaptations of it uh, Charles Dickens, Our Mutual Friend, for my Victorian lit module. Uh, I really hate Charles Dickens, I'm not gonna lie, and this is like the thickest book of all time. I'm really not looking forward to this, I'm really not. But sometimes, for academic purposes, you have to read things that you hate, and this is one of those times. I also have to read Villette, I think this is also for Victorian lit. I don't mind the Bronte sisters, I like Jane Eyre, but that's... Is that the same Bronte, or is that a different Bronte? The same Bronte. Didn't know that there was that... that, 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 that. I didn't know that this was the same Bronte. Um, I like Jane Eyre. I've not read any of the other Bronte sisters things. I've only ever read Jane Eyre. But I do like um, Charlotte Bronte and Emily Bronte. Stuff that I have seen, read, and watched and all that. So I'm semi looking forward to this. Not my favourite kind of era for books to be honest. But I'll deal. I also have Elizabeth Gaskell by Mary Barton. Um, really don't know anything about this book to be honest. It's on my Victorian lit course again. So it's something that I have to read next term. And the last book, the fuck me, I can't talk today. And the last book that I bought for um, my course next term is this book of uh, Selected Tales by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, although I already have the story, the short story that we're doing for my uh, film course in another book, um, it's like a big hardback illustrated book. I just thought that having a paperback would be easier to carry around. The story that we're doing from it is The Mask of the Red Death, in case anyone's interested. But it was in this and I thought paperbacks are just easier than hardbacks. I almost forgot about this one. Another book that I was given uh, was this book of Audrey Hepburn portraits. Audrey Hepburn, Portraits of an Icon. My grandma, Steph, my, my grandma on my dad's side got me this book for Christmas. And I think it's actually beautiful. It's um, the National Portrait Gallery like big coffee table book with like a bunch of photographs of her and it has stuff about her life and f film stills and all that kind of thing so yay! So now I'm going to talk about my TBR list for the month of January coming up and if you do not know what TBR stands for it means to be read so that means all the books that I am planning on reading whether I actually do read them or not you'll have to wait till next month's book club to find out Number one, I'm definitely going to read Marvels because um, graphic novels like this thickness are just quite quite easy to get through quite quickly and it has a lot of subject matter that definitely interests me, you know, mental health problems and all that kind of thing or stuff that I really like reading about. That makes me sound morbid as fuck. Along the same vein, I, I don't have the book with me right now because it's downstairs in the bathroom and I just like really can't be bothered to go pick it up. Uh, but something that I've been kind of like picking up and like not really properly reading, but I definitely want to finish in January before I go back to uni, is The Psychopath Test, which I talked about in my last month's book club as being on my December TBR. I did start reading it, um, but to be honest, I've been very busy since I've been home, so I haven't had time to sit down and read like a thick hardback book. But I have been enjoying it so far. It's um, real life journalism based, so it's like a journalistic novel, kind of like Hunter S. Thompson, I guess, but a little bit more kind of like subdued. Um, but so far, it's really interesting and it's kind of like puzzling and you're wondering where the book's going. Hopefully, I will get to read that this month. 
And lastly, I really want to read City of Bones, um, just because I want to do a few more like young adult lie light reading kind of things before I have to start reading Charles Dickens for my course. So I thought that I could maybe delve into this and enjoy a little bit of fantasy before I actually have to start reading stuff for my uni course again. That's everything for this month's book club. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to stick around and see my next month's book club, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. I make these videos at the end of every month along with my monthly favourites videos. I hope you guys had an amazing Christmas and a very happy New Year as well. If I put this up before the new year, which I probably will. If you want to follow me on Twitter, Tumblr or Instagram, they'll all be linked down in the description along with everything what I'm wearing and what's on my face right now. I look really shiny. Oh dear. I'm not shiny. I'm just hydrated. Yeah. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.